All right, so let's talk about Navy Federal Credit Union. This credit union is probably one of the most generous when it comes down to credit limits. There have been people who receive a $20,000 credit limit with only a 650 credit score. So if you're trying to figure out which Navy Federal credit card to choose, make sure you watch this video to the very end. What's up winners, my name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit, starting out by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. I created a video similar to this a couple years ago about ranking the best to worst credit cards the Navy Federal has to offer. This is gonna be an updated version to see if anything changes. So before we start, let's first talk about how to get in with Navy Federal. You might have heard about backdoor options and things like that, but it's really not that difficult to get into this credit union. The most basic and general way to get a membership is that you gotta have some sort of military affiliation. Either you're in the military yourself or have a family member that's affiliated. Even if those affiliations are not already members with Navy Federal Credit Union, you can still use their credentials to get you access. Additionally, people who are DOD civilians can also join as well. Another way to get into this credit union is that if you live with somebody who's already a member themselves. So let's just say that you have a roommate who's a member you can piggyback off of their membership as long as you can show that you live at the same address. Now, once you become a member, let's talk about when you should apply for a credit card. There is no specific time range, so as soon as you become a member, you can apply for a credit card that same day. I know that some in the past said that you should be a member for six months to a year, but from what I've seen, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. If your credit is average or below average, you may wanna wait a little bit longer before you establish a relationship before applying, but it is really up to you when you wanna apply. Additionally, Navy Federal does have a few Feature that allows you to pre-qualify for credit cards. Now let's break down the tiers before I start listing them off. The S tier, it means superb, which means that this is a top of the line credit card. A is an excellent card, but didn't quite make the cut of being superb. B is average, C is below average, and F is straight garbage, and you should not even apply for it. With all Navy Federal credit cards, you have a certain amount of perks that come along with them. You have 24 seven access to stateside member reps, no balance transfer or foreign transaction fees, the ability to freeze and unfreeze your card, lower APRs, zero liability, fraud notification, and you also get access to your FICO score. So with that out of the way, now let's get onto the list. The first credit card that we will be going over will be the cash rewards credit card. At the making of this video, you can earn $200 bonus cash back after you spend $2,000 within the first 90 days of the account opening. From an ROI standpoint, this gives you a 10% return, which is pretty standard amongst credit card bonuses. As for the reward system, this credit card gives you 1.5% cash back on all purchases. It's pretty straightforward, there's no points you gotta worry about, so whatever money that you spend, you just get a certain percentage back. Some other features and benefits includes no limits on rewards that you can earn, your rewards do not expire as long as the account remains open, collision damage waiver, and cell phone protection. Additionally, I would consider this a forever card since it does not have any annual fees. So for this card, I will place this credit card in the B tier. The reason being is that this is pretty average. I tend to focus more on rewards and bonuses, but to get 1.5% cash back on every purchase and a $200 welcome bonus is still pretty good. I might have ranked it a little bit higher if it was a 2% cash back card. Next up will be the More Rewards MX. Currently, you can earn 10,000 bonus points, which is a $100 value when you spend $1,000 within the first 90 days of the account opening. From an ROI standpoint, this will be a 10% return, which is very similar to the cash rewards card. Now, let's talk about the reward system. You get 3x at restaurants, food delivery, supermarkets, gas, transit, and also 1% cash back on everything else. Some extra perks and benefits include entertainment access, roadside assistance, the ability to redeem your points in cash, travel, gift cards, and merchandise, and you can also get up to 25% off on car rentals, plus car rental loss and damage insurance. I would also consider this a forever card since it doesn't have an annual fee either. So for me, I would place this credit card in the A tier. The reason being is that you can earn a lot more points based on your spending habits. Like the majority of us, getting cash back on gas, restaurants, and supermarkets does come in handy since this is something that we tend to spend a lot of money on. As for the points, every Navy Federal point is roughly around one cent. So depending on your spending habits, you can get a lot of bang for your buck with this credit card. Now let's keep it moving with our next card, which will be the Visa Signature Flagship Rewards card. Currently with this credit card, you can get a one year free Amazon Prime membership, plus the $49 annual fee is waived for the first year. Even if you already have a Prime membership, when you renew your credit card, they will credit your account up to the value of a Prime membership, which is 130 bucks. The sign-up bonus is not as good as what it used to be, but something is better than nothing. Now let's talk about the reward system. You get 3 extra points on travel and 2 extra points on everything else. This is actually a pretty good cashback system because the majority of credit cards out there will only offer 1% cashback on the everything else category. 
What you gotta keep in mind is that once you have to start paying the annual fee of $49, you would have to spend at least $2,450 just to break even on that fee. Additionally, your points does not expire as long as the account remains open. After doing some digging and reading the fine print, you can start redeeming your points once you reach 100 for travel related rewards. For example, once you rack up 50,000 points, this will be equivalent to a $500 airline ticket. Now, if you wanted to redeem your points for cash back, the minimum redemption level will be 5,000 points, which is equivalent to 50 bucks. I find this rather annoying since a lot of credit cards will allow you to redeem your points for cash back right away, and most may have a $25 threshold, but a $50 threshold, I would consider that to be pretty high. But what I did find interesting in the fine print is that you can redeem 4,900 points as a refund for your annual fee. So for the majority of credit cards out there that do have an annual fee, they will typically charge your account first, then you will be able to use your points as statement credit. You can receive a statement credit for $100 for global entry or $85 for TSA pre-check. You also get worldwide automatic travel insurance, cell phone protection, and travel and emergency assistance. So for this credit card, I would place this in the S tier. The reason being is that if you were to get the Amazon cash value of $130, plus a statement credit for global entry and TSA pre-check, this will be equivalent to around $230 in incentives. Since you get the annual fee waived for the first year, you should be good for the next four years given the value of those benefits. Getting 3x on travel and 2x on everything else is pretty dope. Most travel credit cards will never give you 2x on other expenses. Now moving on to the next credit card, which will be the Gold Rewards card. At the making of this video, there's currently no sign up bonuses, but they do have a 0% introductory APR for purchases within the first 6 months. The reward system is fairly decent. With this credit card, you get 3x on restaurants, 2x on gas, and 1x on everything else. Some other additional benefits include no reward limits, cell phone protection, and you can redeem your points for cash, travel, gift cards, and merchandise. There are actually two variations to this credit card. There's a MasterCard version and a Visa version. After looking at the fine print, there's really not much of a difference. So for me personally, I would probably opt in for the Visa version just due to the fact that you can use it at wholesale clubs such as Costco. So for this credit card, I would place this in the B tier. The reason being is that having 0% APR for the first six months is all right, but it's really not all that spectacular. Most cards out there that will give you an introductory APR lasts anywhere between 12 to 18 months. And the thing with zero APR that you have to keep in mind is that whenever you have a balance on your credit card, this will increase your credit utilization and it will negatively impact your credit score. So if you are thinking about making a big purchase and needing some extra time to pay it off, it would be nice to save on interest, but it's definitely not a habit that you would want to keep. So as for the reward system, it is fairly average. You get 3X on restaurants and 2X on gas which is not bad, so B tier is pretty fair. Now let's keep it moving with our next credit card, which will be the Platinum card. The two things that this card has going for it is that you get zero introductory APR on balance transfers for the first 12 months, and it has the lowest APR of the bunch, which can get as low as 5.99% depending on your credit worthiness. Additionally, whenever you do decide to do a balance transfer, you would not have to pay any balance transfer fee, which is great because it saves you anywhere between three to $5. Unfortunately, with this credit card, it does not have a reward system, but it does come with some additional features and benefits. This includes collision damage waiver, cell phone protection, travel and emergency assistance. I would place this credit card in the C tier. This is not necessarily a horrible credit card, but the only thing that's going for it is being a good emergency card. If you are in the middle of a pickle or need to save some money on interest, this card can help you out for the time being, but having balances on credit cards is never worth the money. I know I got a lot of hate last time because I ranked this credit card so low, but if you are consistently holding balances on your credit card, you should not be having a credit card. Credit card debt is one of the worst kinds of debts that you can have. Plus it has such a significant impact on your credit score. But again, this would not be my first, second, or even third choice. But if you have multiple credit cards from Navy Federal Credit Union already, and you're wanting to add another one to your collection, then I say go for it. Now let's move on to our next credit card, which will be the End Rewards Secure Credit Card. Since this is a secure credit card, this is mainly for those who are new to credit or looking to rebuild their credit. So how this card will work is that you need to deposit at least $200 into your membership savings account to back your spending. And once approved, they will hold on to that deposit into your account as your credit card's limit. Then you would just use that card just like any other credit card. Navy Federal says that after three months, you could be eligible for a credit limit increase that goes beyond your deposit. And after six months, they can return that deposit and then upgrade you to the cash rewards card. So this is definitely not your forever card because you truly want to upgrade to an unsecured credit card so your deposit is not just sitting there in one place and not being invested. The great thing about this secure card is that it also provides rewards. 
you get 1x points on every dollar spent. And some other additional features and benefits is that you get cell phone protection, car rental coverage, plus you can redeem your points for cash, statement credit, gift cards, and merchandise. I would place this card in the B tier. The reason being is that this is a beginner card and for those who are looking to rebuild their credit. But when you compare this card to other secure cards on the market, this is one of the better ones. I have seen people graduating from this card within six months and getting approved for the flagship card soon after. All this card is, is a credit card with training wheels because it is definitely possible for those who do not have a credit history, but as Navy Federal members to get an unsecured credit card right off the bat. But if you are new to Navy Fed and new to credit, then it doesn't hurt to use this card for a few months then upgrade soon after. I really can't place this card any higher or lower because it's a very niche card for target demographic, so that's why I place it in the B tier. When it's all said and done, even the worst Navy Federal cards are better than most credit cards out there. Given the fact that this is a credit union, they tend to be more generous when it comes to credit limits, approving those with average credit and better customer service. If you are still confused on how to get into Navy Fed, it is definitely not that complex and I'm pretty sure there's someone in your network or circle that you can find that will allow you to join. Now I want to turn it over to you. Which credit card is your favorite from Navy Federal? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in my next videos.